Welcome back to another video of Black Hat Python. In this one, we are building yet another burp extension. This one, a lot more full-featured, a lot more complex than the last one. Uh, so we're actually using an API here, and uh, there was a lot of work on the back end that was needed uh, in order to get this working. And the book didn't really tell you anything <laughs> about the back end part. I had to kind of figure that out on my own. Uh, basically, we're using the... Bing API, which I had to create a uh, free account on Microsoft Azure in order to use that API and get my key, which this is where you'd put your API key in here uh, when you go to actually run this thing. But uh, I went ahead and did that and, and saved it and imported it into Burp already. But this is the, aside from this here, everything else you see here will uh, be as written. It'll be the same. Uh, like you'll need it. Um, so really what we have going on here are the typical, well, the typical import here that you need for any burp extension, as I mentioned in the last episode, but then we're using eye context menu factory. And, uh, what we could do is we could take a look at the, uh, API here, eye context menu factory. And basically what it says is, Extensions can implement this interface and then call iBurp extender callbacks, register context menu factory to register a factory for custom context menu items. So basically uh, to translate, right, is what's going to happen is we're going to use this uh, API in order to make it to where when we have a request showing in our proxy tab, we can right click and send it to our extension, which we are going to call um, Bing, right? So basically using this interface here, we'll be able to create, we'll be able to add the functionality to where, you know, I have a, a request in the proxy. I can just say, right click, send a Bing, and then it'll do all the logic that we have that we'll get to here in a second. So that's why we're importing that. And then we're gonna need some Java stuff. So java.net URL, to support the URLs, right? Java util, array list, Java uh, X swing, uh, J menu item, and thread start new thread to make this a multi-threaded application. Now, for these here, uh, if you go back here, what you'll see is that um, they're needed based off of these imports here. So that's the reason that we're gonna grab them and uh, yeah, so without further ado, let's get into the actual code here. Now, one thing I'll note is that the API host that they gave in the actual book, Black Hat, uh, the actual uh, Black Hat Python book, is it's no longer the right URL, I believe. Um, I don't know. I couldn't. I couldn't find anything with. Uh, they had api.cognitive.microsoft.com. I don't know if that's just something that has changed between when the book came out, which was not that long ago, and now. But <laughs> that was one thing I was racking my brain around for a while, and then I found out uh, through the Azure portal that uh, the endpoint, you know, the actual host I need to hit is uh, api.bing.microsoft.com, and also in a similar vein, the actual. Um, subdirectories that I need to go to were different than what they told me in the Black Hat Python book. But I was able to figure that out with the help of handy dandy Postman. So yeah, we're able to get that going anyways. But uh, yep, of course, nothing too crazy going on here. We always got to register extender callbacks. Um, so we're going to do that and just set up some you know, self variables here, self callbacks, helpers, and uh, context, which will initialize to none. And uh, we're going to name our extension BHP Bing. Um, and then we need to register the context menu factory, like it mentioned earlier. So nothing too crazy going on there. Now, a required uh, function for iContext menu factory um, based off the API documentation that we were looking at earlier, is to have this function called create menu items. And uh, that's why this is here. I guess that is one advantage to using Jython. It's very clear to tell which ones are required functions from the API and which ones are functionality we're adding. Because if you notice the camel case here, those are the required functions. And the, uh, the underscore is like the Pythonic way, right? 
So because uh, it's a required function, we have to write it in camel case. Otherwise, it won't recognize it as being the same thing. But we're going to actually set now our context self.context variable, which we initialized up here, to the context menu, which is what is going to be passed in um, from the user, essentially, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, have uh, the menu list as an array list. And we will keep adding to that list, uh, or we will not even keep adding, just one time really, uh, the J menu item. That's part of the API, right? We're gonna we're gonna call it send to Bing, right? So whatever I type here is what name will show up when I right click on the request, and the men the drop down comes up. You'll see when I demo this will make more sense, perhaps, but we're gonna quite aptly name this send to Bing because that's what it's gonna be doing. And the actual action that it's going to perform is to call our Bing menu function, essentially, right? And uh, that is uh, an event. Uh, so we have this event variable here. And uh, then what we're going to do from this point is that we're going to you know, do the uh, get selected messages. So these are all built-in uh, built things here from the... Uh, context menu, right? So this is, just comes down to looking at the documentation to find, find out what these, uh, you know, which ones to use, which methods to use, but you can tell that they're uh, part of the, the Java. Once again, you can tell they're part of like pre-built Java stuff because they're in camel. It's like sn this, uh, camel case or snake case, whatever you want to call it rather than the underscores. That's that's the giveaway, basically, right? You just got to check the documentation, though, for that um, if you really want to get into, like, down in the weeds with it. But, uh, yeah, basically, this is going to get the selected messages, send that to HTTP traffic variable, and uh, then we're just going to print uh, request highlighted, and then, um, well, how, how many requests were highlighted, right? Because we're looking at the length of this variable. And as long as there is... Uh, data in it, right? Uh, basically, as long as there's items in the list, because it's going to be a list. So for each item in that list, we will be running this get HTTP service method on the traffic, on the item, basically, and assigning that to the service variable. And then from there, we're going to run get host and we'll have user selected host, host. Now, the easier way is probably to show you the output and then it'll make more sense when you see this stuff, but let's just roll through this for now, right? So this is gonna allow us to see and you know, print off you know, user selected host and it'll tell us which host we selected and then it'll pass that host in to the search function here. And with this function, it's going to look if it's an IP address or the domain, essentially. So is IP. It's looking to see if it's an IP or not. That's why that's a Boolean. We're typecasting this into a Boolean. And uh, if you, you know, we're doing this in a try except. So if we get a socket error, then we're going to set is IP for false because we're going to assume in that case that it's a domain. So if it is an IP, then the host will be the IP address. Otherwise, um, we'll set, and, and at that point, because it's an IP address, we'll set the domain for false because it's not a domain, it's an IP address. Otherwise, we assume that um, it will be a domain. So we're just going to run the get host by name on this host, right? And uh, that will give us the IP address, and then we'll set it to domain to true because in that case, we're assuming it's a domain and then we're just going to start the threading there um, using the Bing query, which is, or calling Bing query essentially here, right? And we're going to pass in the Bing query string, which we're building out here. We're going to say IP and then the IP, give it the IP address. And in the case that it's a domain, then we're going to build the query string as domain colon and the domain name. And this is, uh, you, you got to have this comma here as well, something to note. I mean, yeah, this is something you see from time to time, especially if you saw, you know, like when I was working with SQLite as well, sometimes um, you need it in this, uh, in this format. Um, this is one of the quirks of it there. And uh, 
so from this point, right, we're calling this Bing query, and this is where the bulk of the logic resides. So we're going to print, and, and all these print statements, by the way, they're going to go to the output in burp. So this will make more sense here when you see it, but once again, for your information. So we're going to be printing, performing Bing search on, and it'll tell you what the query string it's performing the search on is. And then here's where I had to modify it again. Uh, they gave me a different path. They had um, an extra directory in here somewhere. But I was able to find it just through Microsoft Azure uh, Quick Start API documentation for this. And um, yeah, so we're just saying like, hey, this is going to be, we're going to make a request to this endpoint with our API host, you know, slotted in here, which if you recall, that's this. And uh, yeah, from here, we're just making sure that we have, we build out our request properly, right? With all the correct headers, uh, including this right here, which is very important. This is our API key. So the header key, the key to this header is called this. And then the value will be our API key, of course. And we're giving it a user agent, a black app Python in this, in this case. And uh, yeah, th this is where, Essentially, if you're familiar with doing this, you know, making HTTP uh, HTTP requests in Python, like uh, using something like uh, URL lib or like my the, my preferred way using requests, uh, this is basically the Java version of how you would do that. Uh, what you have going on here, for the most part, you know, that's why you see the uh, Camel case once again. So. The way this works is you got to pass in the um, the host and then the port and then the Boolean, uh, Boolean here and then HTTP request. And we need to uh, convert to string. I believe this is a Java method, actually, this to string here. I'm like 99% sure um, because, yeah, obviously that's not how you would typecast in Python. And if you if you notice here, it's not even highlighted because um, it, it's thinking you're writing Python. It doesn't know this is actually Jython, right? Um, so, you know, there's that nastiness going on. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, then we'll call split on it. And this is just for nice uh, formatting and making the output look nice. So it'll make sense once you see it. And so what it's going to try to do is uh, do a JSON.loads on the body, which is, um, I believe, serializing the data. And um, I, I could have that mixed up, but I believe that's serializing. And then <clears throat> if it gets a type error or a value error, then um, it will assign that to the variable ERR and um, print no results, and then it'll print out the error message for you, which is pretty nice. And uh, we'll initialize a list called sites and uh, we'll, we'll try to get the, the web pages, right? And the uh, the sites will be equal to respond. Now this is basically we're parsing the uh, the JSON at this point. That This is basically a dictionary here. So you have response um, here, which is probably like the whole output is like wrapped in this response response, and then it's like wrapped in all the stuff, right? Uh, and the key to the first dictionary you want to access is called web pages. And then the next key that you want to access the value of is called value. And then if length of site, so if this populated with anything at all, then we're going to print a hundred stars just to, you know, make it look nicely formatted. And uh, we'll print the name of it, the URL, the description, because these are all uh, these are all fields that we'll be able to get. So basically, inside response web pages value is another key called name. And we'll grab the value of that. Another key called URL. We'll grab the value of that. Another key called snippet. We'll grab the value of that. Right. And so we're just gonna display all of that nicely formatted. And then the Java URL here is going to be, you know, we're going to pass in site and the URL, which is another key within the site, wrapped in uh, the site here, which is basically the item in the list. 
Okay. So yeah, this right here, right? So it's basically in response web pages value. There's one called URL and that's what we're, that's how we're accessing the value there. And we'll go into this URL. Uh, we're passing into URL. And here's the next cool part about the script is that if it's not in scope, we're going to add it to scope. So basically it's going to get all of these subdomains for us. Okay. And what it's going to do and because this is the whole point of using Bing, I should have said this from the start, uh, the Bing API, when we search on a domain, it will find the subdomains for us. And now we can add not only the, the main domain we're searching on, but all of its subdomains to our scope in Burp, uh, which is pretty neat, pretty handy. So that's what it's going to be doing. So adding is going to print to the console, adding this URL to Burp scope, and it's going to add it for us. And then else it'll say that there's an empty response from Bing if um, if it wasn't able to get any information or maybe you made the wrong API call as happened to me in the beginning. So let's go ahead and demo this real quick. I've loaded it in already. Uh, as you see here, I got it. So what we can do is if we go to a site, so if we use their site, right, testphpvolnweb.com. I don't know that that's their site, but the one they use to test a lot, right? I can just right click in here and say, send a Bing. That appears now because we added it through the eye context menu. And so when I do that, I go to extender and I go to output here and I see all this came in. So performing Bing search on this IP, performing Bing search on this domain, and then it grabs a bunch of stuff, right? So it grabs like the title of the site. It looks like. You know, basically all the stuff from the uh, from the actual API that it was getting earlier. Um, if you want to see what the JSON looks like, I believe I have that over here on my on my Postman. Though I don't really want to dox my API key. Let's see here. Um, yeah, let me pull this in. Here we go. Should be all good here. Don't think I have anything leak uh, leaking here. So. Yeah, this is like uh, the actual data it was getting from the API. And see, we're pulling certain things like snippet and name and, and all that. So name name was like basically, it, it looks like it's grabbing from the title of the site. That's probably how Bing's doing it, I would guess. But uh, yeah, it's grabbing all this stuff, the description. And uh, now also, if you know, so see, look, it's found the subdomain test HTML5 uh, was one of them. Uh, in this case, uh, also, it found volnweb.com. So, uh, www.volnweb.com, right? So, pretty neat stuff. And if I go now, like I said, to target, I see all three of these were added to the scope for me automatically. So, yeah, pretty handy little script. Definitely one of the most complex things we've created so far. Uh, so hopefully you guys are enjoying the series so far. If, sure, if so, be sure to uh, hit the like button and uh, subscribe as well. There'll be more of this content on the way. And if you want to get caught up in this series, go ahead and check out the playlist on screen right now, Black Hat Python. I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.